meeting to start to think about next year and what classes you're going to take. It's unbelievable that we're at the point of this year when you can start to think about that. We've made it this far. Not sure if we thought we would at the beginning of the year. So I think good job to everyone for making it to this point. And now you get to imagine um, what you're interested in and what you might want to take next year for your junior year. So we have all the curriculum leaders here to share what the options are. I would just say the following. Your junior year is a busy year. Um, in addition to the courses you're going to choose, you're probably going to be taking some possibly standardized tests. Um, and a lot of times junior year is when people start to take maybe a couple, three, sometimes four difficult courses. So you're going to want to think about what you're passionate about and what you can manage in a way where you can keep your ability to sleep at night and enjoy high school. Because don't forget, uh, that's part of high school is, is having some time to enjoy it. So I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Kind, but keep in mind as you hear about all these amazing courses, what is going to be a good balance for you is an important theme to keep in the back of your mind when you're trying to figure out what you're going to take next year with your parents. Thank you. I just want to, um, Ellen, I can see you on my screen. Do you guys see the presentation? Does everybody see? Okay. Um, I'm actually just going to like let the curriculum leaders run here. Um, but just for the students, uh, if you haven't already, you shortly will be receiving a letter home that uh, has like your day and time of your appointment to meet with your counselor to talk about your classes for next year. Um, and towards the end of this, I'll just briefly mention how you can see what you've been recommended to take by your current teachers or, and where you can go to make modifications to that if uh, there's something you want to add or, or um, change. Um, but with that, um, Mr. Cross, you're up first. Hi there, future juniors. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Cross. Um, I'm the curriculum leader for the English department. Um, and for junior year, you guys have two choices. Um, so the first one is uh, regular English 11 honors, um, which is a traditional English course. Um, it is focused uh, largely on the American experience, um, figuring out what role we play in the construction and understanding of what American literature is. Um, a lot of it is canonical. Um, you can see on the slide, you're reading through some classics. So Arthur Miller's The Crucible, Huck Finn, uh, Their Eyes Are Watching God, The Great Gatsby, poems, short stories, fiction. Um, the English course you are probably used to, used to having uh, through your high school experience. Um, the other option is AP English Language. This one's a little different. Um, we do read fiction uh, in AP uh, Language, but it's primarily about rhetoric. Um, it's prim primarily about the author of the thing that we're reading. And by thing, it could be anything. Um, it could be essays, letters, memoirs, advertisements, cartoons, uh, nonfiction works, of course. Um, really anything um, that the author wants something from the audience. So we spend the whole year kind of parsing that relationship of how authors um, manipulate language in order to achieve a certain effect. Um, it's, a, it's an AP course, obviously. It culminates in an exam. Um, in terms of workload, um, it's more, it's really more of a, of a writing course than a reading course. I mean, we do read widely. We have The Crucible again, Huck Finn again, a lot of nonfiction texts, um, but the reading tends to be smaller stuff that we read closely and then do things with. Um, the writing is, is much more substantial than English 11, which I think you would expect. Um, and by the end of the course, uh, we finish up with your college essay. Um, and hopefully you've studied the voices of so many other good authors by that point um, that you have developed your voice uh, and become more, well, more authentically you. Uh, that's the best that we can do that. Um, if you guys have questions, if you want to put those in the chat, I'm happy to answer anything now. Um, if you don't, you can always find me in A307 um, or just ask your current English teacher uh, for more details. Um, happy to go over uh, any of this with you. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, many of you uh, next year. And I'll pause here for questions if there are any. Someone raised their hand. Yeah, Gavin. Aaron, if you want to unmute him. Oh, man. OK, hold on. Um, let's see. Gavin, does that work? 
Uh, yeah. Um, I just did it on accident. I, I didn't mean to raise my hand. Okay. okay. Thanks, okay. Kevin. I will say I should have mentioned this. Everybody, the curriculum leaders are going to resume their X block break uh, after their they speak. So if somebody has a question that's pertaining okay. to uh, content that's just been presented, you should ask while they're still here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, oh, uh, Miss Meyer we, decides that. Yeah, we don't we don't make any decisions about who teaches what until the middle of the summer. So I would just say to you, do not decide what you're going to take based on a teacher, because anything that might be taught by a particular person this year, it may be a different person next year. Think about what course you want to take. Um, the work difference would be in the writing. Um, so the English 11 would be a standard kind of deal. You, you read a work, maybe it takes six weeks or so, maybe two months, you, you write a paper at the end of it. Um, so uh, you're probably writing, I don't know, five or six major papers over the course of the year. AP language is going to be more. Um, there's a lot of blogging and analysis and, and short questions and just personal responses and longer essays and process essays. Um, I try to, uh, we try to vary it up um, to keep them interesting, um, but there, it's, it's a writing course. Like that's one of the major goals of the course is just to improve your writing. Um, creative writing or essay writing. So yes, there are essays. When you say creative writing, you're, Yes, it's creative because we want you to, to, to kind of flex your creativity. Um, and there are a million different ways that we'll show you how to do that. Um, but we're not writing stories per se. So if that's what you mean by creative writing, um, no. And the closest that comes to that would be um, in the Crucible, there, there's a diary, um, a diary exercise where uh, I ask you to kind of go into the head of a character and write from their perspective. Um, but I'm not sure if you would call that creative or not. Um, philosophy. We do cover some philosophy um, in the end of the spring. Um, we deal with some of we deal with some of the greats, uh, Socrates and Aristotle and Locke, and we talk about um, the concept of ownership and what it means to own something. Um, I'm looking I'm looking for ways to incorporate more philosophy because I find that the the students really enjoy that um, and thinking on your feet and wrestling with with questions that don't necessarily have a right or wrong answer. Um, so right now the philosophy is uh, into in one unit, but I'm hoping to broaden that out. Anything else? All right, those were good questions, I think. Um, yeah. All right, we're gonna keep it moving, Ms. Landsman. Uh, Mr. Cross, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, take care everyone. All right, Ms. Landsman. Do I need to unmute you? There you go. Hi, okay. everybody. Um, all right. So for next year, you have uh, two choices to make for your core social studies. You either choose um, a, a AP U.S. History or U.S. History Honors. Uh, history Honors is a survey course. It starts at um, the pre-colonial period and it goes through present day. Um, and you will end it by taking the Regents exam if they happen next year. Um, and then AP US is um, a college level course. It's much more rigorous. Um, there are gonna be a lot more um, depth in the content, but you're also going to be responsible for uh, learning some of the curriculum on your own because it's a college level course and because um, there's so much material that has to be covered. Those of you who are taking AP World uh, History this year, it's, it's similar to that. Uh, in addition to those two courses, we have some electives that we offer in the high school uh, for, for you guys. Next year, you have Bronco TV. Bronco TV is a full year course, and you learn how the, to produce television shows, and you get the opportunity to work in the uh, new TV studio and create Bronco TV, which is really cool. Um, and next year, you have the opportunity of taking Introduction to Business. Just so you know, the business and psychology courses are offered every other year. So this is a one semester course to help you under, uh, develop your understanding of 
um, what it is in the business world. So it includes the study of business decision making, business ethics, um, new product development, business planning, and things like that. In addition to that, could you go to the next slide? Yes, I can. And I just want to mention the United States history is a requirement. So none it's of what, yes. Yeah. Yes. You, so have to of, choose one, you have to choose one of the two. You either have to take US history honors or AP US to satisfy that requirement. Um, and then you also have an additional course, which is the service learning course. Um, and the one that you guys have the option of taking next year is the research seminar on educational inequality. And this allows you to um, examine issues surrounding equity, justice, service through the lens of education. And it also partners up with Sarah Lawrence College. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to work with them as well. Okay, any questions for me? And most of you have me or are in the classroom right next door. So you can always pop by or join my extra help and ask questions as well then. No questions? All right. Thank you, Ms. Landsman. All right, Ms. Flood. Uh, Mr. Kine, I have a question. Sure. Um, if you don't take an AP course, um, then will you not get accepted into the school of your choice? No, Raina, you can take, you don't have to take an AP course next year. I think you would love US history. Okay. Okay. Good I think question, Raina. In that course. <laughs> All right, I am going to move on, I think, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Ms. Landsman. Ms. Flood? Awete, everybody. Welcome to Language. Uh, my name is Miss Flood, and I teach uh, the, the Latin courses in the high school. Uh, for this, uh, for world languages, I'm assuming right now, if you were in a level three, this is what your options would be. And then I will, I'll offer some other options um, afterwards. But if you are in a level three, you move on to the level four course. For French, that's a course um, designed to increase your fluency in spoken, written, writing, and reading French. Uh, you read Le Petit Prince, and you continue your adventures of self-discovery by looking uh, at the perspective of Quebec, uh, countries in North and West Africa, and islands of the Caribbean, and you look at their poetry, their readings, their uh, literature, and there's also an exchange program, which we would hope to have. You know, obviously, we'll have to wait and see what happens with COVID, uh, but there is an opportunity to participate in an exchange program in France. In Latin for students read extensive uh, selections from the Aeneid and the Aeneid is one of the masterpieces of Latin literature and it talks about the struggle of Aeneas to found a new um, a new land after he leaves burning Troy. Uh, Spanish for is also an option for students uh, for students who have mastered the basics they will continue on learning to uh, enhancing their ability to read write uh, read write speak uh, and um, analyze literature, art, music, and the culture of Spanish-speaking people with an emphasis on Latin American cultures. The French and Spanish courses are conducted uh, primarily in the language, uh, in the target language. We also, uh, so if you are not in those levels, you would go on to the next level of language that you are in. If you choose, there are some uh, options. If you do not want to continue on past the three level, you can choose a, a level one in Latin, French, Spanish, or Mandarin. Um, and if you are in any of the other levels, then you would just move on to the next level of that course. The World Language Department would like to also offer uh, two electives. So we can go to the next slide. So um, one elective is the discussion of philosophy. And so students would in a semester course that would be taught in English, uh, we would trace some of the great thinkers of our time and explore how they have contributed innovative thoughts and revolutionized our understanding of the world. And then another course, semester course we'd like to offer is a course on mythology, which looks at how myths um, can interpret life across various cultures and spans of time. So if you're interested in any of those courses, uh, those would be options as well. They would be taught in English by one of the world language teachers. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, 
Um, is that for, uh, I don't see anything. Do you see anything, Mr. Kind? No. Okay. No. All right. Great. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Flood. Bye. Um, Ms. Meyer, did you want to? Sure. Yeah. All right. So just briefly, because math, um, based on what class you're in right now, it basically determines what class you're going to go to next year. So those of you who are in algebra now go to geometry. Depending on which geometry you're in, you're going to go to algebra two. Actually, no, most of you, I think, are probably in algebra two right now because you're 10th graders. So depending on which algebra two you're in, you're, most of you are going to go to pre-calc, diff-calc, or functions, stats, trig. Just a couple of notes. We do have electives in the math department. We have AP statistics. There is a prerequisite. And we have computer science courses, intro to Java um, and AP computer science. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. AP computer science A, which is based on Java. A uh, couple things to note here. There's also some other electives listed on here, like competitive robotics and intro to robotics and entrepreneurship one and two, which Mr. Cornish can probably speak to a little bit more. I'll just say if you take introduction to Java and you have no programming experience, I highly recommend you take some sort of online course the summer leading up to it. Java programming is like hardcore programming. You're gonna learn about it, but you need to have some information about it. Um, and if you take AP Computer Science A and you haven't taken intro to Java, you definitely need to do some summer work um, unless you're just a person who codes on your own in Java. <laughs> uh, and then the AP Computer Science Principles course is a lot less hardcore programming and more conceptual. And it's more like drag and drop functionality, building an app. So if you're interested in computer science, but maybe not coding, AP Computer Science Principles is probably a better match. AP Computer Science A is like writing hardcore code, which some of you may be interested in, but just make sure you talk to your counselor about which one's right for you. That's it for me. Any questions about math, computer science, robotics, entrepreneurship? Those are just open electives. Great. All right, Mr. Cornish. Hi everyone, you can hear me okay? Yep, yep. Great. So, hi everyone, I'm Mr. Cornish. I'm a curriculum leader for science. And so what you have in front of you right there is uh, the course options, which are split left and right. On the left side of your screen, you've got the level two sciences, uh, bio, earth science and chem, and they are the courses which are extensions and developments on the, the core sciences, if you like, which you've had experience in. Uh, but these courses are full year and they typically will end in the Regents exam. So that's still what you want to be planning on, uh, that it ends in the Regents exam. Forensic science is one of those courses that we schedule uh, every other year. Um, and it's a fun course. It's a lab science, as all of these things are. Um, and forensics. So dig into that if that's something of um, of interest to you. Computational physics, uh, which might otherwise be called advanced physics in the catalog, uh, is, is a, it's a physics course, but it's more a science course coupled with um, some coding. So uh, it's essentially a project-based course with an introduction and application of programming. And the language which it's done in is different each year the projects which are done are different each year, but physics offers one of the best places to find phenomena, real world phenomena to model and use software to help us understand the behaviors. Bronx River Research 1 and 2, uh, they are, as per its name, they're a research-based course. And so it's a big departure from the trad traditional academic setting. Uh, the idea is that students dive right in and really do some, some innovative and genuine and their own research into um, a problem which they can identify. And it's all based around the Bronx River and many of you have had some exposure to that um, already in some form or another. 
Um, and so it's, it's a, a research-based course, which you really want to keep in mind. It's a lot of it's going to be um, on the shoulders of the student to govern how they um, execute the course. And so you ideally you end up uh, working perhaps with a mentor on some of the ideas which you're working on. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, on the right-hand side, um, your AP courses, we've got AP Bio, AP Chem, and AP Enviro Science. Those three courses are, a, they're not the Bio 2, right? They're not the Chemistry 2. Uh, both of them, all of them require a lot of reading. Chem, AP Chem in particular has a lot of math inside of it. Um, AP Bio, you're typically looking at um, things like genetics, um, some ecology, some evolution, molecular biology, that kind of thing in AP environmental science, which is incidentally, it's not earth science. Um, and it's not earth science just with an AP label slapped on it. Um, you, you're looking at things like population and pollution, um, energy, land use, that kind of thing. AP physics one and two, they're two separate courses. AP physics one, is all about Newtonian mechanics. Uh, and then AP Physics 2 is a smattering of other bits and pieces which don't fit into that nice little box of Newtonian mechanics. So we talk about waves and optics and thermodynamics and that kind of stuff. They're both algebra-based courses. And the uh, single elective listed down there, Fundamentals of Engineering, that's a one semester introduction course. It's project based. It's, the idea is there <clears throat> is to provide the, the student opportunity, come down into this room to make use of some rapid prototyping tools and experience the design cycle um, within side of engineering, which is iterative in nature. Uh, Aaron, do you want to just jump to the next slide of where we were on the robotics? Can I just say something before we go to that? Yeah, please. Juniors who have not taken a science regents exam are required to take a course that ends in a science regents. That could be a level two or one of the APs. If you want to double in science, you can do that if there's space in your schedule. But next year, if you have not already done this, and it's not too many people have, you do need a science regents to graduate high school. So you've got to choose a course that ends in a regents and your guidance counselor is going to walk you through that. Good point. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your, your schedule. Don't look at just this year, look at where you have to be um, in order for graduation. So here's just a quick word on this slide, which Ms. Maya spoke to earlier. We've got the competitive robotics introduction to robotics. This year was the first time it ran. It was just a one semester class and they were together. So the original intent there and current environment prohibited as such, but the competitive side, the intention there was to uh, provide for the platform whereby the students could then compete with what they built outside and extracurricular wise. And the introduction idea being just build the fundamentals and it's sort of in, all in-house. But this past year, they ran together in the one class, one section, we all did the same thing, essentially. Entrepreneurship one and two, each one of those are one semester a piece. And so in the catalog and time-wise, they run one after the other. So they're full semester each. It would be suggested, strongly encouraged, if you want to do entrepreneurship two, to do entrepreneurship one, uh, because in number, in Part two, it really builds on some of the foundational ideas and you want to take ideas and run with them in entrepreneurship too. It's an opportunity to, to build out the ideas which you really develop and learn about in entrepreneurship one. Uh, if you've got any questions about any of those courses, then please feel free to reach out to myself or your other current science teachers and they'll be happy to help answer the questions. So was there any questions in the chat there? I think Ms. Meyer has been answering them uh, for us, but um, we'll give it a second to see if anything new comes in. Yeah, pro that, that one about AP1 versus before AP2, that one comes up quite, a, quite often. Um, probably, but not required. It's encouraged because a lot of the 
thinking and the tools which are covered in AP1 and really drilled in AP1, you can take and apply to any and all other uh, units of study which are in AP2. So it's not required, but it's really a good thing to have done because you'll build a better foundation. So I'm seeing what's going on in the chat. I don't know for the for the purposes of the recording, I'm just going to like voice this over. Um, junior, as a junior, you need to take a class, a science class that ends in a science regions if you haven't already taken a science regions. So generally speaking, those are the level two classes and the AP classes. Um, so if you wanted to take, for example, forensic science, you can do that. You would just, in addition to that, have to take bio two or earth science two. Um, I think uh, the other chat question, I think, is it SWIFT that they teach in computer science principles? Is that the computer language? It can be, it doesn't have to be. So it has been in the past, um, but that one's way more flexible. It's really up to the individual teacher, up to the individual student, what they want to do with it. But SWIFT okay. is one of the common ones, yeah. Yeah, and uh, if you were in living environment last year, although we did not have a Regents because of COVID, um, you have exemption from the Regents and those, if you're in that group of students, then you could take anything you want uh, junior year in science. All right, just to honor the time here, we're gonna move on, uh, Ms. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Cornish. Thank you. All right, I'll be quick. Um, it's very straightforward. If you've taken Studio Art 1 and 2, your junior year, you can take Studio Art 3, which is also advanced art. Um, and we'll still cover drawing and painting and printmaking, but gets into more advanced concepts and has a little more of your own creative um, conceptual freedom. Uh, you have the option to take AP Art History, which is a college level art history course. Uh, Basically, it's a, a course that starts in prehistory and culminates in contemporary artists working today, analyzing art and place, placing them in conceptual um, placement. Uh, we're looking at why cultures make art and the impact it has on the world today through history. Um, you also have the option of taking electives, which is digital photography, computer art, and ceramics. Uh, Digital photography, we pretty much go through town, take pictures and learn the basics of photography. Um, computer art is different ways of making art from graphic design to, as you can see on the slide, animation and some illustration design. And then ceramics, typically in a non-COVID year is working in the ceramics room in clay, um, but depending on how things are going, it can also turn into a more sculptural um, craft class depending on uh, materials. And that is, that is it as whatever you're in now, you would just go to the next level if you're continuing. Um, Miss Allen, I have a question. Um, sure. What if you're not good at drawing realism? I do not expect anybody in any of my classes to draw realistically. It, it is really, we, we'll talk a lot about different They're concepts. Like, I always think whenever I'm in the art classroom, I'm expected to draw realism, but I just can't do it. You're absolutely not expected to, Reina. And I, I could talk to you a lot about a lot of professional artists that do not draw in realism. <laughs> Continue on, Reina. All right, anyone else? You do need a visual art credit to graduate. You need one full um, credit. So the, the course that counts as a foundation credit is Art Studio One. Um, and Mr. Kine, help me out here. Anything else in this? Yeah, uh, art history would count as uh, art credit. Um, and then to Wesley's point, that visual art credit can also be earned in other forms of, I guess, art, if you will, or creative arts being music. Um, and acting and directing through some other venues. So it, it, you, you, as much as Miss Allen would like, you're not required to take an art class as, in high school, but um, it does fulfill a credit for require, uh, a graduation requirement. AP Art History is a full year. Um, it is a full survey 
like I mentioned, from prehistory through contemporary art. Um, so, and it's, you know, it's a fast paced, high level course. So if, since you've taken world freshman, sophomore year, you have a lot of the content already. And then we go into like modernism and a lot of the art um, that you've probably seen everywhere. And we go into non-Western art as well. So it, it's a great course, especially if you like to look at art, talk about art and um, understand culture a lot better. Other questions? Feel free to email me any other questions or ask your friends, all that good stuff. All right. All right, thank you, Ms. Allen. Dr. Luter, take us home. Happy to do that. Uh, hi, everyone. So next fall, we hope to have all of our ensembles back 100%, and we need your leadership in order to make that happen. So band, orchestra, and chorus um, hopefully will be back in place next fall. There is an honors section of the band and an honors section of the orchestra. And if you'd like to know how you qualify for that, please see Ms. Karkala or myself. We also have some opportunities for students who are not particularly interested in the performing groups or who want an additional experience. And those include music theory, where you learn the basic of notation and chord structures. AP music theory is a very prescribed kind of course. In addition to learning about notation, um, you will also be able to sight sing and take dictation. That course um, requires some basic knowledge before you enter it. So if you're interested in that, please see me before you register. Independent study is a wonderful place for our creative souls. Um, we've had people uh, compose operas, things for um, bands that they have uh, established themselves. So anything goes in terms of independent study, uh, please see me if you'd like to um, talk about a project for next year. And then we have a new course next year, digital sound production. And essentially what that is, is using the computer as an instrument. So we program the computer using EarSketch, which is a Python or Java-based program. We can also, if you're not into technology in that way, we can also um, play into the computer and then manipulate the sound um, using that program, EarSketch. So that's um, the way that a lot of the new video games and films and media arts and soundscapes are created. And we're very excited about that new course. And I know you've been listening a long time. So best thing to do if you're interested in music courses, come see one of the music teachers. Thanks, everybody. OK, thank you, Dr. Luter. So that kind of brings us to the end. Um, I will. There's a sheet here on the next slide that um, for those of you that um, are, are veering towards the more ambitious junior case course load, excuse me, uh, we have a worksheet that you can kind of map out how much like homework time you're gonna be spending first in relation to the courses that you sign up for. Uh, and we strongly encourage you to take a look at this, uh, especially if you're like teetering on more than uh, multiple AP classes. Um, in addition to that, and I'm gonna stop sharing because I don't know that you, or I'm gonna stop the screen share. We do have just a, a few steps to take you through what you need to do to register for classes. It's essentially the same thing you did last year, just this year. Um, so you should be familiar um, by now, all of your, the recommendations from your teachers should be there. Uh, so you should be able to see that um, as we speak. Um, I will pause for a second and then um, I'm just gonna make one other announcement. I just, if anybody has any like lingering questions about today's presentation, I'll, I'll just give you all a second to put something in the chat. I don't, um, I don't believe any of the computer courses teach C sharp. I think if you're interested in C sharp, well, first of all, if you learn Java conceptually, C sharp is going to be very similar. Um, the one thing I would say is if you take computer science principles and you're interested in exploring C sharp, 
there probably is a way to do that in that course because you're going to be deciding kind of what app you develop yourself. But uh, we don't have a C sharp specific course. All right, I think that's it. However, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna stop this recording. Um, Ted, 